Hey everyone, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. Happy Sunday to you, or whatever day of the week it might be if you're watching this on replay. This is this week's Christ and Crafting, and I'm really excited about it. I have a lot of different things to show you. Um, and we're gonna be using those little boxes, those little set of stacking trays that I picked up this week at Walmart, a set of three for $10. Plus, I'm gonna show you my cute little t-shirt, and we're gonna be talking about how Jesus is the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. And I'm not going to be singing. I wish I could, but anyways, as you're hopping on, say hi, let me know where you're watching from, let me know if you have any questions, feel free to sprinkle, you know, all that normal good stuff. So let me see if I can find myself just to quickly add a link. Oopsie. Um, I have several techniques to show you today and this idea of how you can make a seasonal, a season neutral, um, sorry, a season neutral sign that you can change out for every season. Okay, I got it. All right, so, um, like I said, we started with the set of three little trays that came from Walmart for $10. This is what the ticket looks like. I found them in the crafting section near the, um, all the different surfaces that they have, okay? And the idea is that we're gonna make something that you can set on a shelf because these are deep. Um, and then you can, you can decorate them with a Bible verse or a faith thought, and then you can kind of switch things out. So the first one that I made was this one. And I want to tell you what I did. Then we're, we have two more that we're going to actually do, and I'm going to show you the swaps. Okay, so stay with me to the very end, because then we're going to be talking about all these things that Jesus is and more. And I really hope you'll uh, stay with me until we do the really good part, which is the Christ part. Okay, so this says, with God, all things are possible, Matthew 19, 26. And what I did with this one, well, first of all, I removed the handles. Do you guys remember they had handles on both sides? And on this one, I put it back in and I just tied a knot on it. But I'm thinking you could do a cute ribbon. Um, there's lots of different things that you could do with that. Then I just used some of this beeswax that I happen to have on hand. And I, I'm always telling you guys to use what you have. Um, and I put a layer of beeswax on the flat part and then I buffed it. You could also use a spray sealer or any kind of clear wax that you have. I have found that my stencils are much crisper on painted wood and stained wood when the wood has been sealed in with a sealer or a wax first. So I didn't wait any time, I mean maybe a few minutes, in between putting this uh, wax on and doing my stencil and then I want you guys to notice I did the same stencil three times just scooching it over a teeny bit each time I used um, let's see what I used first white gray and black and it looks like it has a shadow I think it, I love the stencil to start out with but I think it looks really good Okay, so this box is little. There's not really too much that you could do to it. Um, but it would look great sitting next to the other two or just next to one or even by itself, okay? Um, so when I was finished, I did nothing else to it. I'm not going to um, spray it or anything because it's not gonna get handled. And this was, okay, this was made with, let's skip some of the basic stuff. This stencil, from Magnolia and some black chalk paste. And I did pin links down at the bottom. This stencil has another part to it that we're gonna use also. This is an awesome stencil. If you just wanna get one face stencil, I don't know, I might recommend this because you get two on the same sheet and we're gonna use the other one in just a second and they're great. So this is chalk paste 
it's stable, it's gonna stay. And when I'm ready, I can wash it off and do something different. And that's what I really like about it. Okay, so that was the first one. Let's see where I should I put it. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is the other half of that same stencil. And it says, Ephesians 2, 8, for it is by grace you have been saved. These are great thoughts to have right now. As we're, um, it's December, what is it? The 19th or 20th? I don't know, I've lost track. This year's been crazy, 2020. And as we're getting ready to celebrate the birth of our savior, Jesus Christ, it's good to remember what he ultimately did with his life, which is he laid it down for us to um, provide us salvation. So it's his grace, none of our merit, um, that gives us our salvation. Okay, so here's the next tray. And what, let me look at it. What I did before I came live, it's gonna be very hard for you to tell, is I did one stencil on it using white chalk paste. This is to give it some, um, so it looks like it's a little bit, has a shadow, if that makes any sense. Uh, okay, so I am going to, I'll pick everything up, because it's hard to see into these deep trays. I'll pick everything up so you can see. I'm gonna use my little fuzzing claw from Magnolia. These green stencils are really sticky. And um, so it's just good to fuzz them. It makes it easier to get it up without stretching them. And here, let me give you this other tip. When you're pulling your stencils up, you know, get the corners, but then pull by the side, straight up or from the top, straight down. Because you'll notice, let me show you this little trick. These stencils are stretchy this way, uh, diagonally, and this way. They're not stretchy this way. And when people tell me my stencils are all curled up, I know that it's because they were stuck on whatever surface pretty seriously. And then when they removed them, which I'm guilty of this too, I have lots of stencils that are curling because I've stretched them. But when you pull them up by the edges, that is what can stretch them and cause them to curl. Okay, so there you go. That's your lesson on stenciling for the day. So I'm going to lay this stencil back down over the top of what I already have, but I'm going to go slightly off to the side. And this is going to be hard to do because I can't hardly see where it is with white. And it really does not have to be any perfect spot. Hang with me while I get it on here in the right spot. Okay, so what you want to do is line it up, line your stencil up with the first stencil that you put on, and then just scooch it slightly over to the side. Or if you have room, you can go slightly over to either side and up just a, just a smidge, okay? And I'm gonna use black chalk paste for this one. And are you wondering why is she putting that stencil all the way in that corner? It's because we're gonna talk about what you can do with this um, that isn't permanent, that you can switch it out all year long. And I love stuff like that, that you can, you can do something easy to make it match to whatever season you're in. That's totally my thing that I love. Okay, so we're just using black chalk paste from Magnolia. And I did put a link at the bottom of the page. It's, it's got little keys and a red heart on both sides and it says Heidi's Magnolia Links. Okay, and I'm just gonna take a pretty generous blob of black and I'll lift this up as soon as I get it covering my stencil. Because I know it's hard for you guys to see what I'm doing. I am going to take pictures of the, um, the label for these trays uh, in case you want to see if your local Walmart has them 
or see if you can order them from Walmart online and pick them up at the curb or whatever or have them shipped to you. I told you guys when I went live the other day that I thought they were super cute and I picked them up and I carried them to the front checkout and then I um, asked the lady up there if she could tell me what the price was because I couldn't find it. And I was thinking if it's more than $20, I'm not gonna keep them. I'll ask her to put it back. Oops. But, surprise, surprise, it was $10 for three of them. So I grabbed them. And I've already got chalk paste all over my hands. Darn it. Okay, so we're gonna remove this stencil and then we're gonna lay it face down in a tub of water until I can take it to the sink. The reason why I lay it face down, see now I'm pulling it side to side. Ooh, that looks pretty. The reason why I'm laying it down face down is so that I can make sure that as it sinks into the water, that the water is starting to wash away the chalk. Okay, same deal with these two holes on either side. We could put ribbons in there if we wanted. But, um, or we could put some kind of big bow on top of it if we wanted. But what I'm thinking is that you can just set this on your shelf and set something right here that is seasonal. For example, um, you could put some of these little snowflakes here. Or, I love these. These came from, I've had a ton of questions from people, where did you get these little trees? Okay, they came from Target Dollar Spot. Look how cute that is. Oh my gosh, I love it. Do you guys like, I like this one the best. Or, this was another tree option that was also from Target, and I could put a couple of them there. Or, you know, these little house thingamabobs that you can get at Dollar Tree? Put something, it might need to be a little bit smaller right there. Or, you know, these little chunky wood crosses that come from Dollar Tree that we've done a zillion different things with. For when Easter's here, you could put something like that in it. For summer, I'm thinking um, a either a sand dollar with a starfish, because the starfish has um, faith significance. Um, for fall, I could put a little gray pumpkin or something. Uh, so, I mean, you can see how you could super easily change this out for all the seasons throughout the year. Which, this actual box here was about $3 if you divide 10 by, th by three pieces. Um, so I think it's a really great deal and it would make a sweet gift, especially if you gave the person um, the stencil, I'm calling it a box or a tray, with a couple of little fluffy items that they could put in that other corner. Do you guys like that idea? You love my box. Thanks, Jane. I love this too. You like the gray trees or the cross? Me too. I love the gray trees the best. Um, I got these quite a while ago at Target Dollar Spot, so I doubt if they still have them. Uh, but, and I needed two sizes. These came out of that uh, cake dome thing that I put Santa Claus with glitter on. I just pulled them out to show you. But um, I needed two different sizes to be able to, I needed one to be shorter to fit underneath that cake dome. So all I did was just pull the bottom off, cut the little stick shorter, and glue it back on. So you can always make things work, one way or another. That's what I like to do. Okay, so I'm gonna set this guy aside. And we'll do the next one that has, so like I said before, let me just tell you this one more time. The stencil set has both of these stencils on it. They're like each a half sheet. So this is a really good one and it's called With God All Things Are Possible. And um, I did pin a link down there. This is not, 
It's not specific to any season, although you can make it seasonal. And um, you can make it for, you can use that, those faith, those Bible verses for almost any um, occasion. So if you wanted to make cards or, I don't know, you can do all kinds of things. Okay, so this is the larger one. And I just wanted to show you to start off with that it has this on it. And all I did was unknot one side and then I pulled it off. I'm not throwing this away. I'm putting it in my bin of rope and so forth. And I will repurpose this because you guys know how I am into something for sure at some point. Okay, so this one was the same deal. I used the wax that I had. It's just clear beeswax. You could use min wax. You could use a spray sealer, whatever you want. But I did that on the flat part of this larger one to close down those pores on that this wood, which I don't know if it's painted or stained, I can't really tell. Um, and I definitely recommend that you do that on any wood, painted wood or stained wood projects. It makes your stencil impression so much crisper. Okay, and we're gonna use this stencil. The, that's the one that we're gonna actually talk about during the Christ part of this Christ and crafting. And um, I want to encourage you guys, if you haven't heard this song before, or you're not right off the top of your head sure what I'm talking about, just Google song, Waymaker. And then it'll bring it up, you know, a, a lot of different bands, I think, have performed it over time. So you can listen to it. It's beautiful. And this is the t-shirt that I made. Okay, so this was just one of those, I don't know, what do you call this, a baseball t-shirt that I had in my closet for knocking around, for cleaning the house, you know, not like something that I would really actually wear out. It has super long sleeves, so I have to fold them up. And I think I bought like an XL. Um, and I've been using my silver ink from Magnolia a lot lately. And I just decided, wouldn't this be pretty? And so this morning, I knocked this out real quick. I let it dry and then I heat set it with a hot iron and it's permanent. And I think it's super cute. I'm gonna actually wear this. I wish the sleeves were shorter so that we could do something cute on the cuff, like we did with the, um, the one that, the red one that said grateful, thankful, blessed. Okay, so anyways. This is a stencil, and before, before, there's something in here. Before I came live, I used the gray chalk paste to put the first layer down. And we're gonna do one more in black, okay? So, where's my fuzzing cloth? I'm going to fuzz it because these green stickle stick green stencils are really sticky. You love my shirt and the song. Oh, thanks, Pam. I love the song too. The song makes me um, weepy because there's just I mean the, these words, and that's what we're going to talk about. So I hope you'll stay with me. There is so much significance to each one of these things. Um, and I'm just going to touch the very, very top surface of it um, when we do the Christ part. But oh, this t-shirt and these projects are going to go somewhere in my house. I don't know where. Um, and they will be a great visual reminder of the truths that these different phrases bring. Okay, so... I just fuzzed it. I have used this a few times, so I didn't fuzz it super crazy. Um, and I'm just looking. So what I do when I'm gonna do this um, sort of shadowing technique is the first thing I do is I get the stencil on so that I can see what I did my first layer. And then I just scooch it to the side, okay? So, I need to sort of pick it up gently. This is not hard, you guys. It's just 
I want it to, you know, look good, so I want to get it in the right place. Okay. And I'm just pressing it down. All right. Okay, and we're going to use the black chalk paste again from Magnolia. If you're just joining us, um, you can go back when this is all over and watch from the beginning if you want, because I showed two other trays that are really cute. Um, but I did pin links at the bottom of this page. So we're going to take a big blob. And I think one of the secrets to going over the top of another stencil is to work quickly so that the chalk paste doesn't dry in the holes and pull up what you have done with your first layer. So that's why I am working pretty quickly. Now I've got that song in my head. I'm gonna be humming it for the rest of the day and driving my family crazy. <laughs> you, you know, I have, um, sometimes when I go back to check comments, I'll just have the sound on of my videos that I've done. And um, I have been so embarrassed on multiple occasions to hear myself humming right as I'm getting started or in the middle of, you know, one of my explanations. Oh my gosh. I was not given the gift of, um, of a voice. I just was given the gift of humming and it's not great, and it's embarrassing to my family, but anyways, it's kind of embarrassing to me too when I don't even realize that I'm doing it and I'm live on Facebook coming. So, there you go. Okay, I'm almost done here. All right, and I'm just looking for any seriously big globs to pick back up. This is what it looks like. Okay, so let's Gently lift up a corner so that we can get to the middle and start peeking. Oh my gosh. Wow, this looks so good. Okay, let's flip it upside down and stick it in my little tub over here. And excuse me for two seconds, look at my hands. I don't even want to touch my project until I get that off. Oh my word. Let me get one more. Here this. Sorry, 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 sorry. I have um, told you guys for a long time that I am a messy crafter. Here you're seeing it exactly. Okay, good enough, I guess. Okay, look how amazing that looks. Can you see on, okay, hey, if the comments are bugging you, um, you can, depending on what device you're on, you can either swipe them up or swipe them to the side and they'll disappear, just FYI. But can you see how it looks like it's almost three-dimensional because the gray is to one side and the black is just slightly off to the other? I love this. And um, it's gonna have just a really small spot right here for you to add something. So it would have to be really little. I'm not sure if this tree would work. It might be too big. Yeah, it needs to be something smaller. Just look around your house and see what kind of little tchotchkes you have, or let me see if the cross would work. I think the cross is gonna be too big also. Yeah, it definitely needs to be smaller. And like I said, you could put a bow here um, I, I would definitely leave the anything, any decoration off the holes on this side because you want it to be sturdy. Oh no. What did I put my fingers in? I have chalk paste on them again. <laughs> um, you want it to be able to stand up and not, not be wobbly. Okay, so let me just put all this stuff off to the side so I have some room. Oh, and I wanted to show you this idea is very similar to what I did with the stacking trays that you can get from uh, Magnolia. You remember this? We 
We used the Village of Old Houses, that stencil, and then the same one for It Is By Grace That You Have Been Saved. And then I just used the end of a little stylus thing or a weeder if you have a Cricut. Or you, you could use the end of a pencil or whatever, an end of a paintbrush. And I just little did little dot, dot, dots in the sky to make it snow. So it's the exact same idea. You're using what is a tray. This is how this is intended to be. You're using the tray as a piece of art. So keep that in mind um, as something that you can definitely do. Um, if you're looking for, you know, a surface to be able to, uh, to stencil. So, okay, so we're going to be in John 14, 6 for the start. And like I said at the beginning, <clears throat> um, Jesus is our way maker. He is our miracle worker. He is our promise keeper. And he is the light in the darkness. And um, this song, I, music really touches me. Um, I don't know if you're the same way. I'm one of those people that I cry <laughs> at church when we're singing often, pretty much every time. And I, I can get teary just listening to a song on the radio also. Um, but anyways, these are four awesome things about Jesus that it's good to remember now as we're heading into Christmas and so the celebration of our Savior Jesus Christ's birth. It's, there are also four really great things to remember as we'll be heading into Easter time and we'll be celebrating the resurrection of our Savior. It's just four great things to remember if you're scared, worried, anxious, uh, upset, insecure, all those adjectives, um, depressed, lonely. Um, I can't even think of anything else, but they're great things to remember during those times like this year, 2020, when we just don't know what in the world is going to happen next or what, what can we rely on? What is true for sure? Um, so the first verse I want to go into is from this very first part that says, he is my way maker. What is a way maker? All right, in John chapter 14, verse six, let's go back to 14, um, verse one. And I'm gonna read, read this because this is, um, this is Jesus talking to the disciples before the crucifixion. Um, he was trying to reassure them, which is what we need to hear as well. And um, they were troubled, which is a good word to describe how a lot of people feel right now. So in, and it's in red. When something is in red in your Bible, that means that it's Jesus speaking. It's not somebody else speaking their interpretation or their own thoughts. Like it's not the Apostle Paul. This is Jesus who says this. Um, and in case you're wondering, I'm reading out of my Life Application Study Bible and it's in the New International Version. So if you have a Bible that's a different translation, I don't know, sometimes the words are just slightly different, but different, but the main point is the same, okay? And Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. I love this. In my Father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you may also be where I am. You know the way to the place I am going. And then Thomas, doubting Thomas, says to the Lord, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus is our way maker. Jesus answered, 
I, Jesus, am the way. I, Jesus, am the truth, and I, Jesus, am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. So Jesus is um, basically, th these are his words um, to people who were troubled um, and unsure of what was going to happen just like many of us are, was to just reassure them that he is the way. And oh my gosh, I just love the idea that he has gone on to heaven, to his, his father's house, and he's prepared a place for us there. So that, uh, what does it say? So that when I come back, I will take you to be with me and you may also be where I am, will be with Jesus in our Father's house um, for all eternity. So that's the first thing to remember. The second thing is that Jesus is the miracle worker. Gosh, I really wish I had a voice and I could sing because <laughs> I love this song. Okay, so did I print this? Let me see if I did. I wanted to just print out the seven miracles that um that jesus did that are um oh he did more miracles than this i'm sure but these are the ones that are in the new testament okay so the first one his first miracle was he changed water into wine at that wedding in cana um the second was one was he healed the royal official son in capernaum um, the third one was him healing the paralytic man at the pool at Bethesda. The fourth was when he fed the 5,000 people um, on the mountain when he was giving the Beatitudes. The fifth one was when Jesus walked on water, the whole thing with um, Peter. The sixth one was him healing the man that was blind from birth. And the seventh was the raising of Lazarus, his friend. Um, so when I hear this song or see this, I'm thinking about how Jesus is the miracle worker. And those were seven amazing miracles that are in the Bible. But let's not forget the, the most, the ultimate miracle that he performed, and that was conquering death. And providing a way for us um, to have eternal life and to be with him. So uh, he died for us. He went to the tomb for three days for us. And he rose for us. And he changed everything with this last miracle. And I do believe that there are still miracles happening today. They're just not recorded in the New Testament. Um, after his death and resurrection... There was no need to, um, if you've studied the Bible before, this will make sense. If not, you might think it sounds weird. But there was no need to have animal sacrifices or any other offerings to receive atonement for the people's sins. We don't need to do anything to receive forgiveness for our sins, except trust that Jesus already paid it all that he is the only way that can um, provide us the miracle of eternal life and the miracle here on earth right now of never being alone and having the Holy Spirit reside in us um, to comfort us and, and tell us what to do, tell us what to pray when we don't even know what to pray. You get teary too, I know. I'm sorry. Um, that was Lynn saying that. Yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big sobber. So um, he was the perfect lamb. Jesus was the perfect lamb. He defeated death for us and he gives us eternal life. So uh, I personally don't understand why that isn't, why people don't talk. I mean, I'm sure some people do talk about that as being the eighth and most significant miracle that Jesus did. But um for the most part, it's just recorded that there were seven miracles in the New Testament. 
So he is our personal miracle worker. He conquered death for each one of us and he provided a way for each one of us to have eternal life and to have life here now to the fullest. So that, that's pretty amazing. Okay, the next part of this is that he's the promise keeper. <clears throat> and you know, um, in this world, uh, nothing, you cannot rely on anything 100%. You just can't. Because people will fail you, circumstances will fail you, things will fail you. Um, but Jesus never will. And um, he keeps his promises. He does not change. I know, I know people might love you, uh, but they are not, they cannot keep their promises like Jesus can. And in Numbers 23, 19, let me find it. Okay. I don't have it. This is so funny because I didn't actually look this up yet in my Bible, but it's the only thing I have written on this page right here. I guess Numbers is not a, a super popular book in the Bible to preach from um, because I have, my Bible's filled with notes from pretty much every single time I went to church, every Bible study, um, a lot of my own personal quiet time and different things. Okay, so what this says is Verse 19 of Numbers chapter 23. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? No, he doesn't. Um, in Hebrews 13a, I wanted to do a, a New Testament on that too. Not just an Old Testament. Where is Hebrews? There it is. 13.8. Oh my gosh, there's so much here. Um... Well, I want to read a little bit earlier because um, this is what Paul was telling the Hebrews that um, Jesus' some of his promises were that he would never leave us, he would never forsake us. That is in verse 5. And then on verse 8 it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. That is worth using a pink highlighter in your Bible. So he is a promise keeper. Oh, and I was going to take you to Psalm 145, verse 3. Let's do that real quick. Well, Psalm 145.3, there's a reason why I wrote it down, down so let me just read it for you. Um, this is David, and um, King David, and he wrote a lot of the Psalms. And the start of this one says, I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. This is verse 3. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Hmm. Well, 
I don't know what it was that um, I thought I was gonna show you there. Um, I do love verse eight of 145 also, and it said, the Lord is gracious and compassionate. Boy, that's an understatement. He's slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all, and he has comp compassion on all he has made, which that's who we are. Okay, and then the last thing um, from this, these four awesome things to remember about Jesus is that he's the light in the darkness. And um, light is really interesting in the Bible. There's so many references to it. And, you know, back in these days, they didn't have electricity, <laughs> you know? So I guess light, people didn't take light for granted. So there's a lot of different verses about light. Also, light is required for life of any kind to be present. Um, plants, animals, and people all need light. That's one of the essential things that, that plants, animals, and people must have for physical um, to live. And um, so in John 8, 12, this is Jesus, and it's in red again, right here. And um, this is a, a part when Jesus is talking to the disciples and other people, and he says, when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, this is Jesus, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So I think that light was really equated with life. And think about it, if you are in total darkness and you need to get somewhere, it's gonna be scary and it's gonna be dangerous because you can't see anything. You can't see any dangers. Um, but with light, you can see the things that might be stumbling blocks. You can see the potential problems. Um, it's not as scary to walk to the kitchen sink for a glass of water if there is some light available, where it would be scary to come down my steps and walk to the kitchen to get a glass of water in total darkness. And for them, in that time, it would be scary too. Um, so that darkness is really a reference to our sin nature. And um, I think that what Jesus is saying is that he is the light to reveal the darkness in this world for us. And so that we can be aware of it and we can stop sinning. Um, we can um, turn around and go the other direction where the rest of the world might not see something even as a sin. So Jesus is the spiritual light for us and then he provides salvation. So he doesn't require that we get good and then go to him. He says, come to me and I'll help you um, become more like me. I will help you uh, I will help you walk that way. So that's um, pretty much what I wanted to share with you. I encourage you guys to listen to this song. Really, just Google it. Um, or if you have Pandora or one of those music services, look it up and listen to it um, and think about it. And if you're a crafter, gosh, it's so good to have different Bible verses throughout your house. And this is one that I would recommend. Whether you want to hand draw it out or you want to find something that has this that you can mod podge on something or you want to stencil it on a sign or a t-shirt. Um, I just think it's really good for us to remember that Jesus is the way maker. He is the way to the Father. He is the miracle worker. He conquered death and sin for us and he provided a way for us to have eternal life and to have life now 
more abundantly with the help of the counselor, the Holy Spirit, the helper is what the Holy Spirit is called. Um, he keeps his promises and he provides us light in the darkness. So um, I really hope that wasn't a whole bunch of gobbledygook, as I like to say at the end of every Christ in Crafting. Um, I so appreciate you guys. And um, gosh, you guys are so encouraging to me. Um, so as we're headed into Christmas, I'm just hoping that all of you will have a, a wonderful Christ-filled Christmas, um, that you'll be blessed, and that you, that this will be a year unlike any other. So I will see you guys tomorrow um, for a regular Facebook Live. One of the things I want to do this week is I want to figure out how I can film myself at my sink in the kitchen so that I can show you how I wash my stencils and then how I lay them out to dry because I've had a lot of questions about that. So um, feel free to sprinkle this video if you have a friend or family member or acquaintance that is a a Christ follower that you think would like this, please tell them about Christ and crafting. If they're not a Christ follower, but you sense in your Holy, the Holy Spirit's telling you that they're seeking, that they're looking, that they know that you have something different that's not of this world, then feel free to tell them about Christ and crafting. Um, heck, feel free to just sprinkle this to whoever you would like. All right. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Maybe if I can figure out how to turn this off. Oh my word. Here we go. Goodbye everyone, I'll see you later.